Hello, and welcome to this Analyst Angle, a really special one, because I get to welcome in Christoph Bertrand, who's our newest principal analyst here with the Cube Research. And today, we're going to really unpack what's going on with data and really dig into the complexities about storing it, managing it, and protecting it across all different environments. So, hey, welcome on board, Christoph. Great to be here. It, it, this is so exciting because we've known each other for a while. Uh, you've been on a, a number of times on theCUBE, and you've always brought great insights, especially when it comes to data and what you need to do to really harness the power of data and protect it and manage it and really just keep it, keep it solid there. So let's, let's talk about this. Why is data really, I, I guess you could say the, the oil, the gas, the fire that you know, really propels business these days? Well, I mean, everything is about data. I mean, think about it. Even uh, simple goods are augmented by data, whether you're in, on the business side trying to analyze the uh, uh, performance of your products or you're just building additional services or products around a physical good. I like to take the example of uh, a video surveillance camera. I mean, is it really a piece of hardware or is it actually uh, a service that you use for, for protection and et cetera, right? So you think about it, it's, it's really uh, pervasive. It's all over the place, but you know, with data, uh, and big data comes big responsibility as well. And I think that's uh, another area that I'm very interested in, which is you can't just do whatever you want with data and you have to protect it, you have to govern it, uh, you have to manage it, uh, it's, uh, it's a tall order. Yeah, I, I think like you said, the governance and all of those things, I mean, we have the AI, you know, the AI Act in Europe and talking about, you know, you can't do AI without really good data really what could go wrong or what is wrong with data? Well, what could not go wrong? <laughs> That's really the question on this one. Uh, I will say, you know, I talked to a, a CEO once uh, who told me, you know, the only good uh, data or the only good state for data is data that you can never see, which of course for production is an issue. But the point was uh, that essentially you want to make sure you really protect the data from a compliance standpoint. So of course you need to create it, you need to use it for business, but after that, who has access to it is going to be very key. What can they see? What can't they see? How should you use it? And I think you brought up AI, that's a very good point. Uh, should you only be using your data? And, and are you sure you can actually uh, inject it in some of those models? Uh, and I'm not just talking about Gen AI, I'm talking about uh, every type of model and use case. So it's a, it's a big question, and then the other thing is, uh, look, let's just keep, keep things simple. Uh, where's your data? Can you even manage it? Let's start with that. Yeah, yeah, understanding where it is, how you use it, like you said, can you use it? I mean, again, with the AI Act and you have GDPR and you have CCPA and VA, DCPA, whatever the one is in Virginia. I can, I, there's so many, you know, the, the, all the different uh, three letter acronyms or 10 letter acronyms as the case may be. Right. I, I think one of the things that really hits home with a lot of companies and we were we've been at a, a host of data conferences over the past couple weeks and cloud conferences and talking with people about how they're bringing ai to the data in a lot of cases and one of the things they're trying to figure out is do they have to have multiple instantiations and how does really i guess you could say protection and governance happen for the data because they have a lot of different data silos and they try to sometimes bring the data together, sometimes they keep it apart, but there's different governance and protection schemes that they have there. What does that really mean to organizations? Well, I think there are multiple layers to this question. The first thing is, do you know what you have and where it is? And it sounds like a silly question, but I can assure you, most organizations do not have 100% of their data covered. Uh, there's data everywhere, not just on-prem, of course, and that's easier because you kind of know where it is, but uh, in the cloud, in SaaS applications, there may even be SaaS applications you don't know about uh, with shadow IT. Uh, so it gets, it gets pretty complex, and that's number one. Number two is once you've identified your mission-critical data, which is really what cares, you should care about the most, then what is the protection schema? Is it you know, protected? Uh, from deletion? Is it backed up? Is it recoverable? You get into the question of cyber resilience because of course your data is valuable. People are going to go after it because they think they can ransom you. Uh, so there are many dimensions to this. And then, then you get into the, the actual use of data. Well, as you know, personal 
data uh, or PIIs cannot really be used or reused just like that. There are many uh, reasons that you should actually go classify that data and then uh, obfuscate it in some form or mask it, whatever the case may be. And you have to do that across all of your applications, all of your data sources, right? Uh, and only then can you maybe think about using it uh, for AI purposes. Now, I think there are some other uh, very easy use cases uh, for uh, AI, including Gen AI. And that could be just, you know, tech support, for example, because there's very likely no personal data in this. It's just about having, providing a better customer experience, uh, being able to automate some of these uh, uh, processes uh, with data that's yours. So you know it's not external, it's not risky. Uh, let's start simple, I think is kind of what I'm, I'm, I'm looking at now. But we'll see, things are evolving quickly, new use cases have, um, are happening every day. Yeah, I mean, in fact, we were uh, with Red Hat a couple weeks ago when we were talking actually about how do you use what they, they've just put out in the open source community called Instruct Lab, which actually can take some of your internal data and this open source project that was based on uh, an IBM research paper that actually came out and they turned it into a product and actually into an open source project in about 10 weeks. What, what's neat to it, to the, your point about how do you use data, it actually can then create synthetic data. And right. to your point about, hey, not using PII, not having to mask and map all of these different things to get better things. And I think that to me is one of the big things with data and how we utilize it really is, you, you gotta be careful. I mean, and you know, to our, our partner at ETR, uh, they do quarterly, they're tracking AI and the AI use cases. And you kind of hit on one of the top ones, which is customer support or customer success. Mm -hmm. And in the financial services markets, for instance, with using Gen AI, they actually have to have somebody in the loop, a human in the loop. So you don't want somebody giving financial advice, for instance. Right. But if you're calling up to fix a toaster or something <laughs> like that and you need the right answer, maybe you can give them the answer straight out of that. So what else, what else do you see around AI and the buzz with AI and data? Well, I think uh, last year was all about AI and AI this and AI that, but it was uh, a lot of press releases. It, I don't think it was real projects quite yet. Things are evolving quickly, uh, and you've seen it from the various events uh, that you've recently attended, and there are many use cases that are emerging. Uh, I think there are multiple angles to this, right? There's actually leveraging ML and AI in technology. Uh, so. Uh, for example, backup recovery or compliance. I think there's great potential there, whether it's for better support, it's for creation of data protection plans, whatever the case may be, right? Or compliance plans even. Uh, and then there's also looking at AI as in uh, an actual art form almost, where you're gonna build models, you're gonna develop new use cases, and you're gonna use that as part of your offerings or to support your business, whether it's analytics or Gen AI or et cetera. So I think the, uh, we're past the buzzword phase, we're into the uh, early adoption phase, uh, but it's accelerated. It feels like what used to take three years, four years, is really taking a few months now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going at AI speed, I guess. Yeah, I, I was going to say it, it definitely wraps around. And, and to your point, I mean, we were even with NetApp earlier this week at their sales kickoff. And I, I think one of the things that was really interesting is that, you know, built in, building AI into that, and not just Gen AI, like you were saying, but what we, I guess I've been calling traditional AI or traditional ML, and using that to find things like ransomware and do auto protection and right. doing auto snapshots and things of that nature. It seems like data protection and data and how data is utilized and AI is all kind of coming together. Is that what you're seeing from all of these, across all these vendors? Yeah, I think there are really two facets when you think about it. I mean, AI generates a lot of data itself, and that's where you've put some money, so you've got to protect it. And then the other aspect of it is uh, leveraging AI ML as a feature set. And I think that's really where I expect uh, to see more and more vendors uh, start to differentiate uh, more. I will even say this and make this prediction. I think the future is going to be in that space going to be about who is the best at leveraging AI ML as a feature set to automate, uh, to allow uh, IT users, generalists, to really be very, very proficient at protecting their environment. And as the AI workloads, uh, for lack of a better term, grow and start consuming more and more uh, storage and need more and more data, synthetic or not, well, you're going to have to protect those assets. Uh, and I think that's uh, essentially the same story over and over again, except that now you're really dealing with an accelerated type of ramp. 
which is, I think, why a lot of uh, vendors and end users alike are, are struggling with picking the right battles, the right use cases, and developing models that actually create economic value for that business. Yeah, I, I mean, again, you know, I always go back to uh, why do people rob banks? That's that's where the money is, right? Mm -hmm. Why why would you attack AI? Uh, because that's where the data is, right? I mean, you start to look at it and not just prompt injection and other stuff that from a security perspective we're starting to see, but really getting at the data because again, if you can insert data in not just through the prompt, but you can in either insert data, change data, what have you, that changes the actual AI and the right. algorithm, that could have disastrous uh, you know, effects. And I would assume that data management has got to be at the core of this and you know, understanding lineage and things of that nature. Oh, absolutely. And it's just even basic data management, as I said, you, know, you have so many data silos. Where's your data? Have you identified it, classified it? For multiple reasons, uh, whether it's to secure your, your, your uh, posture management for security purposes, uh, whether it's to understand what's PII, what's not, and how to actually treat that data if you need to reuse it. Um, and uh, you know the the list goes on. So even that basic step, I think, is is hard to get to. Uh, and then of course you have to figure out, okay, can I actually use this uh, in a way that is going to be realistic, that is going to be governed, uh, that's going to be responsible uh, for the purpose of uh, you know feeding a model or building a model. So la last kind of thought, I guess here, this this is something you're passionate about. So give us kind of an idea of how you see the landscape you know actually changing right now and we'll uh, and where you're going to be digging in so i'm going to be looking at the intersection of uh, compliance uh, resilience security backup recovery uh, and of course ai is going to be uh, a conversation uh, throughout so that's really what my focus will be uh, I think that's where the market's going. We see, we're seeing those uh, acquisitions, those M&As, the convergence points are happening. Uh, so I'm just going to follow, uh, you know, follow the data. Some people follow the money. Well, I follow the data, but it's about the same in this case. I, I think it is. I think it is. Well, thanks for coming on board and so happy to have you on board, Christoph. And really, just great to kick it off this way. Great to be here. And thank you for watching this episode of The Analyst Angle on The Cube the leader in tech enterprise information news and, importantly, analysis.